Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today's video is a little bit different because we're not talking about cactus. It's actually going to be all about the Venus flytrap. We're going to be looking at how the Venus flytrap flowers and I'm going to be showing you every single flower from bud to bloom and showing you how I pollinate the flowers. We noticed this strange looking stalk and after I did the research I realised that it was a flower stalk that was growing. So let's take a look at the flowers as they progress. Here's the beautiful white flower. Only one of the flowers has opened. So this is an overhead view of the flower and you can see all the other little flower buds behind it that are yet to open up. Look at those little pollen laden anthers there. So we're going to have a go at pollinating this flower because I think that you can self pollinate these ones. So there's the pollen on the tip of the brush fibres there. And then just brush it onto the centre of the stigma. There's actually quite a lot of pollen that's falling off of here. So it's not too much of a problem to get the pollen onto that stigma. You can see where I've brushed away at these anthers because all the pollen is now speckled onto the petals. But here in the centre, I've managed to get the pollen onto the stigma, which you can see attached there, the little white fragments. And then when the other flowers open, I shall do the same thing and try and pollinate those ones. You can pollinate them with their own pollen. So they are self-fertile, but they do need your help in order to transfer the pollen from the anthers onto the stigma. In their natural habitat, this would obviously be done by bugs or insects of a specific type that would come along and pollinate the Venus flytrap. Here's just a quick look at the actual plant itself. So you can see that's the flytrap there and you can see the microscopic hair like receptors in there where an insect would crawl in and it needs to trigger perhaps two or three of those little bristles inside which then triggers a mechanism for it to close shut on its prey. And it's a natural process for these parts, once they've been exhausted, they turn black and wither and die back. And then you get new ones that grow up from the base. And you can see some new ones sprouting here. Just around the other side there at the base, there's another one. So we decided to let the fly trap continue to grow its flower. Um, I'm aware it does expel quite a lot of energy out of the plant. But I was very interested to see the flower, because I've never seen one before. And to see if we get any seeds from it. And this is Jack's fly trap, so he was very happy about the flower when he spotted it today. So we've been feeding this bugs and insects from the garden, such as wood lice, giant ants, moths, and just general insects that are of the right size to fit into the traps. And it's responded well to those. So I think all this um, feeding that we've been giving it has given it a lot of nutrition in order for it to go into flower. And the leaves take about a week to reopen after feeding and sometimes it will have some of the carcass left behind. So because we've kept our fly trap indoors, that's why we've been manually feeding it. If we were to keep it outside all of the time, it would probably get enough food naturally by itself. So the best way to monitor if your fly trap is being fed um, enough food is to ensure that at least one of the fly traps at any one time has a meal inside of it that way you can be sure that it's getting enough food 
and they can go maybe two or three months without any food so you don't need to panic. So a sign of a healthy plant is if one of the leaves closes quickly, it's healthy. If one of the leaves closes slowly, it could be that the leaf is too young or too old or that your plant needs more light. So it's the next day now and we've got two more flowers in bloom. So the one in the centre was the first one that opened yesterday and now today on either side you can see a new flower. On the flower in the centre you can see the stigma looks very different to the other two flowers which have only just opened today. Remembering that I pollinated that one yesterday. But I will transfer pollen from the other flowers onto that one as well just to make sure. So here I am with the brush. So we'll start on this flower here. And go over to the other side. Hold on to the stigma and take pollen from these ones and bring it over to here to that stigma. And then the pollen from here and then add on to this one here. Like that. So it's been quite a few days now since the flowers have bloomed and you can see especially the one in the centre which was the very first flower to open. The petals have curled inwards on themselves and the others are following suit. So there are still a couple of buds left, one there and then another one round there yet to open. And we've pollinated all of the flowers. The stigma in the centre, it starts to fluff out a bit. When the flower first opens, it's quite rigid and thin and skinny. And then the ends start to fluff out. And that's a signal that it's more receptive to pollen. So, to begin with, I was just putting the pollen on as soon as it opened. Um, but then as the day went on and the next day, I kept repollinating them just to make sure... They've all got enough pollen on there, so hopefully these might develop some seed. And then if they are pollinated, over the next few weeks, the flowers then die back and they create dry little brown seed pods on the end of the each of the flower stalk. And then each seed pod, or I'm not sure if you call it fruit or a seed pod, but contain a few seeds per flower and then when you come to sow the seeds it's a bit similar for sowing cactus seed you keep them damp but you do give them some ventilation as well so we've got two more flowers open here and I've waited two or three days now to let the stigmas in the center fluff up a little bit so they're more receptive to the pollen so I'll be pollinating those and you can just see now at the front there there's one bud there that's the last one now and then all the others you can see are curling up and dying back and again the one in the center that's the very first flower that opened and then that's the darker color because it's older and then the other ones around there are curling up now as well
So when it comes to repot your fly trap, you need to make sure that whatever medium you're using, that it contains absolutely no fertilizer because it gets all the nutrition it needs from all of the bugs and insects that it eats. So from approximately March to October is the growing season. During this time you will need to keep your soil wet but not waterlogged. And in winter, it just needs less water and just to keep it slightly damp. As it enters its dormancy from November to the end of February, it will need to be kept at a cool temperature and the plant will start to turn black and die back to its rhizome. And then you can trim off the dead growth. Then in March, when it's the end of the dormancy, you can repot or divide your plant. The growth will resume and you'll have a new Venus flytrap. Mm -hmm.